15 to 20 years ago, we saw function move out of the host, storage fun function specifically, into what became the storage network, and for good reason. We needed to share data, we needed to protect data, we needed to get data off-site, and moving that data away from the host made a lot of sense. In the past five years, we're starting to see that trend reverse, and there are a number of factors driving that. We're seeing a massive increase in pro processing power, decreasing costs in both, pro both processing power and, and memory, and also the disruption of flash. So you're starting to see DAS as a new mechanism. And I'm here with Stu Miniman, who just released today a new definition of server SAN. We're going to talk a, a little bit about that today. And we're also here with CJ Desai. CJ is the president of the Emerging Technologies Division at EMC, a group that is set up to specifically identify disruptions in the industry and then bring them to market. CJ and Stu, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you, David. Really appreciate it. So uh, happy to be here. So let's start. There's some some news today, actually, Stu. Uh, you know, we're talking about all these trends and shifting sands in the industry. Well, Dave Goulden was David Goulden was finally uh, it was announced that he's the the president and CEO of the the EMC II group, a peer of Pat Gelsinger now and and uh, Paul Moritz, which of course we knew all along. We've been saying. Yeah, yeah, David. It's really interesting. The nuance on that, of course, is that Joe Tucci still is chairman and CEO of EMC, the federation, and EMC Squared, the you know entity itself. Um, but now Goulden is a peer with Pat and Paul, running all of the kind of storage infrastructure, the IIG group, and all those pieces uh, under there. So, so your CJ, your new boss got got promoted. So in fact, you got promoted. So congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, so let's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the emerging uh, technology products division and and what the scope is of that and, and, and obviously your role and why you why why did the EMC choose you and why did you choose EMC? That's a great question. So I joined in September. Uh, my background in '90s I was with Oracle Corporation and. One of the things that I did at Oracle, besides doing Oracle applications and so on, was we were the first group to launch software as a service at Oracle. This was in year 2000. Uh, this was around CRM online in that era. And then I was with Symantec. Originally, I ran the security division, uh, which was called Endpoint and Mobility Division. And then after that, my last job with Symantec was Veritas, running Veritas. So everything from VXFS to net backup, backup exec, storage foundation, and other technologies, archiving, archiving in the cloud, and so on. So the reason I joined EMC, Dave, is because they have healthy paranoia about disruptive technologies. They want to bring disruptive technologies in-house or invest in disruptive technologies, give it proper resources, whether it's related to R&D or sales and marketing, to make sure that rather than anybody else disrupting EMC, EMC itself can disrupt when there is a market demand for disruptive technology. Well, I think that's an interesting point too, and, and Stu, we've been observing this market for a long time. I mean, being from the East Coast and watching all the mini computer companies get crushed, and of course, Joe Tucci sort of came out of that world uh, and is very much attuned to that. I think EMC and others have a healthy paranoia. I think that the, the legacy of today's leaders is largely going to be determined by how much they don't have their head in the sands and how much they can sort of eat, eat their own. And we've seen it in a number of, of, of instances with, with EMC. I mean, we're yeah, 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 Dave. So, I mean, it, no, no secret, I, I spent uh, 10 years at EMC, and, uh, you know, one of the Bibles working at EMC was Only the Paranoid Survives uh, by Andy Grove. So, uh, EMC was always looking out for that disruption, uh, and both through, uh, you know, internal R&D and acquisitions, they, they've done a number of moves to, you know, move beyond just being, you know, a hardware company. They expanded their, their software and their services division and have bought a number of product lines uh, to kind of bolster uh, the portfolio. Okay, so CJ, the, the role of the Emerging Technology Products Division is essentially to identify disruptive technologies, that's is that's right? Talk that's about that, that role a little bit and how that all fits into the, the EMC and the Federation. Right, so first of all, at EMC II level, which is the EMC Storage and Infrastructure Division, we are focused on looking at the technologies that are disrupting the market. So let me spend a few seconds talking about it. So one of the first assets that is part of this division is Extreme IO. As you know that there are many all flash arrays that are out there in the market. Uh, EMC has an architecturally superior product that was designed from ground up for flash. So that's one uh, product line that is part of the division. The other one is Scale IO, and you, you're talking about things moving to the host, and with my experience in Veritas and so on, you know, we are definitely seeing the trend that there is definitely unused capacity attached to the server. 
So can we use DAS with manageability of SAN? Can we use, uh, can we help us help our service providers who have scale out infrastructures, they are under cost pressures and a solution that is software based and attached to server and can leverage flash or commodity, hard disk and so on is game changing, is very disruptive. And there are a few other initiatives happening within uh, emerging division, which we'll talk about at EMC World. Uh, not ready to talk about that yet. Okay, but but in concept, is, is, should we look at the division as, you know, both uh, a place where disruptive acquisitions like Extreme IO come yeah. in and, and Scale.io, and is it also uh, Skunk Works, um, of sorts? Skunk Works is a tough word, but yes, uh, advanced research is what I would call it. There. Yeah. So we are. Doing We're very it. colloquial here yeah. sometimes. It's so we are doing advanced research in certain areas. We are exploring partnership where it makes sense for EMC, and we are also constantly looking at disruptive technologies that fit in with overall EMC's vision. Uh, so uh, the in theory, that is the idea behind this division. So let's talk about before we get into the service end. Let's talk about Flash as a, as a disruption. I mean, you guys. Well, we, we wrote a piece, I wrote a piece actually, EMC lands a haymaker uh, when EMC, a long time ago when EMC put the first flash device into Symmetrics. You know, yeah, it was 2008. Yeah, we look back at that now and go, okay, that was it's sort of you know not the future, but at the time it was an indicator of, of yeah. the future. Yeah, 2008, that's right. Um, so flash as a dis disruptive technology, Give us you know, your thoughts on Flash as a disruptive technology. Well, other than the fact that it's a, 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 a persistent medium, what makes it so disruptive? So I think one of the things that we have seen is that the demand from our customers is very high when it comes to performance expectation, low latency, consistency, high performance at low latency. So like uh, you discussed with VMAX, they started, our journey started out in 2008, then followed by VNX, and both VMAX and VNX can go from zero to 100% flash in the configuration today. Uh, Extreme IO specifically was designed from ground up to leverage the power of flash. And what we are seeing with Extreme IO, specifically in the use cases is when you have virtual desktops, right? As, as applications are moving more towards the data center and adoption for virtual desktops is happening, the performance given by Extreme IO on an all flash array is just blazing performance. So, and then you have hyperscale and other types of customers who are saying, we want to attach flash to the server, we want a solution that can scale out and so on. So we are seeing flash being attached, you know, driven through this traditional SAN as well as also as part of the server infrastructure, and that is disrupting the market because the demand for performance, whether it's virtual desktop or virtualized servers or even OLTP workloads where you have high expectation when you're doing reads uh, for the data analytics and so on is very high. So you mentioned the hyperscale, you, you, you've got the, the true scale out architecture, yeah. and then the traditional stuff, you got a stack that's yeah. robust. Yeah. And now a lot of people say, okay, new is going to kill old, and it never happens that way. But yeah. eventually, do you see these two worlds coming together, and how does your division sort of cross-pollinate technologies? Do you share with you know, your colleagues, borrow from your colleagues? How does that all work at, inside of EMC? Great, so you know, EMC, definitely one of the reasons Dave I joined is because it has strong lineage in SAN. And when we are trying to, even for Extreme IO, where we can leverage the scale uh, with engineers and understanding the storage in infrastructure, architecture. So for example, we have done integration with a bunch of EMC products such as VPLEX and so on with Extreme IO. So we do leverage that scale quite a bit. And we do that leverage the scale with sales and marketing efforts with our core sales force and so on to make sure that the division and the products that come out of the division, one, fits in with the overall EMC strategy, and two, can scale, uh, no pun intended, can scale out as we scale the businesses. So that's number one. And then number two is what we also find is I am talking to all of my peers and all the engineers uh, in different organizations to make sure that we are not, uh, we are leveraging the experience they've had, the rich experience EMC had, and if we can do things differently, then we'll do that. So for example, on scale IO, you know, it's a great piece of technology, is server attached software storage solution. Now, Viper is our overall software defined storage messaging, so we are going to integrate with Viper when it comes to 
both the control pane and the data pane. Now that SAN uh, background that EMC has, the perfect lead-in, Stu, to the, the whole server SAN discussion. Now I, mean, I love the fact that SiliconANGLE Wikibon, we, we tend to be ahead of the curve in terms of things that we track. I mean, we were on cloud in you know, 2006, 2007. We were early on, on Hadoop. We've been writing about Bitcoin. You scratch your head about Bitcoin. Now Bitcoin's everywhere. Server SAN is something that people have talked about, Stu, and there really hasn't been a clear definition of, of server SAN, like there wasn't with software-led infrastructure, which became the software-defined data center. But So you took it on yourself and some of your colleagues, David Floyer, to define server SAN, as they say, a term that's been bantied about, but so what is server SAN and how does it relate to this discussion? Sure, sure Dave, and uh, in a lot of ways, this is really an extension of what we've been tracking at Wikibon for a while. Um, you know, one of the big trends we've been following since I came on almost four years ago is how does hyperscale impact the enterprise? So scale out architectures, how Flash uh, is, is involved in things and really having software be uh, you know, the layer that controls everything rather than hardware uh, really differentiating too much is a major piece as well as convergence, which is an area that I've spent a lot of time on, uh, you know, how are the, the compute and the storage assets going together? So server SAN really sits right at that intersection. So it is a converged infrastructure, um, but it's built out of compute nodes that have local storage and the software layer itself can manage all of those storage functionalities. Uh, you know, I think back to, uh, CJ, you work for Symantec. You know, Symantec and Veritas for years were one of the toughest competitors for EMC because they could offer very inexpensive solutions that provided a lot of the functionality that EMC was trying to do with their storage arrays. And, and now with the advancement of uh, the kind of the, the software functionality, you're really seeing that that blurring between, you know, what is a hardware solution, what is a software solution, as well as that, that server and storage line has really blurred a lot. So the hyperconvergence players kind of fit into this discussion discussion, uh, you know, what EMC is doing with Scale.io fits, uh, you know, Square in here, VMware's vSAN, and a number of others. So it, it's an exciting new space, and as, as Dave, you said, over the next few years, we expect many applications are going to fit into this environment, and it will, you know, directly impact the traditional So just to clarify, areas. so ServiceSAN is essentially a pool of direct attached storage devices that communicate, how do they communicate? Is it a high-speed internet, yeah, so whatever, right, right, yeah, right, yeah, Infiniband, exactly. or Ethernet, or whatever it is? and the point of control is the software. Correct. Right, yes. okay, so that that's exciting because again, years ago we were talking about, you know, who's going to be the next Veritas of, of the industry. If there's a software opportunity enabled by the, the, the performance of microprocessors, the decline in, in, in cost of microprocessors and memory to the point where you can actually, without the trade-offs, have software control, you know, the storage Pool. So that leads to scale I.O. Right. What if we could talk about that a, a, a little bit? Where does it fit in the portfolio? Talk about the you know the acquisition and w yeah. where you guys see that going. So scale I.O. became part of uh, EMC family in the uh, fall time frame, early fall time frame. So this was around August, September of 2012. And the reason we were excited about scale I.O. is because one, like we talked about for service providers, you see that they have, they're constantly under cost pressures, they want to use the commodity hardware where it can make sense, and Scale.io is block solution, uh, you know, that works closely with server, and of course blurring the line between the server and storage, like you were talking about earlier, between host and storage, but provides you full manageability, parallel I.O., massive performance, and can scale up to thousands of nodes, and one of the advantages, Dave, of uh, Scale.io is it also works with uh, heterogeneous infrastructure. So whether you have multiple hypervisor from VMware, Microsoft, and so on, uh, we are also doing integration with OpenStack. We are also making sure it can work with bare metal, flash, and magnetic disks. So it is truly a heterogeneous solution. So that's the enterprise use case, uh, sorry, service provider use case. And then on the enterprise side, we are also excited that when enterprises want to leverage DES with manageability of SAN, then Scale.io is a perfect solution, which was your earlier point on the very tough side. Well, we're talking about the, the hyperscale market before, and when you dig into what's going on in hyperscale, they're, they're not putting in big SAN infrastructures. They're, they're using this direct attach you know, a, approach, uh, but of course the, the challenge is the average enterprise doesn't have you know, a zillion engineers running around like Google or, or Amazon. So is that the role that, that EMC's playing, essentially bringing that hyperscale class of product to both the enterprise and the service provider? That's that's exactly, you got it correct. So when you look at it, the service providers, when they want to leverage the manageability and all the features that you expect in traditional SAN, such as thin provisioning and so on, this is provided by Scale.io today. So that's 
the big advantage of scale io in the service provider market and on the enterprise side if you want to run dev test if you are not comfortable moving the data to cloud and you want to run quickly and use your desk capacity or on commodity storage you can do it with scale io and the third thing i'm excited about is viper integration that will integrate with viper also uh, to ensure that um, from control plane of Viper, you can manage scale I.O. and scale I.O. can provide data services. So let's talk a little bit more about and, and unpack the sort of the applications and, and workloads. I, I know, Stu, what you found in your initial research, but where does server SAN fit? And then CJ, I wonder if you could just sort of comment. Yeah, so, so, so Dave, definitely there is a, a little bit of that, that gap. Uh, this scale out architecture is built for, uh, you know, will be great for some modern applications. So, uh, you know, desktop virtualization uh, can, can definitely fit there. Uh, some big data applications, depending on how they're configured, can, can fit there. Um, and But it, it's not today built for necessarily the, the same, you know, kind of mission critical databases uh, you know, there. But, you know, that, that's where over time we expect uh, server saying to expand with more functionality and, and more. Is so that consistent, CJ, with what you guys are yeah, seeing? Yeah, we are definitely seeing that when you are, so for example, you have uh, commodity hardware and you have a bunch of uh, blades from a server provider and you are running an application that your purpose, sole purpose is to scale it out at an efficient cost, this is a perfect solution because this will give you the manageability that you require that traditionally you expected in SAN, but of course at the same time you're going to be cautious. If you're a service provider, cost is the driver, you're going to go for it. Enterprises, they will start with something like dev and test to what he was saying. Uh, and makes sense. What about converged infrastructure? Where does that fit? One of the things that surprised me a little bit at, uh, we were recently at Amazon reInvent is to hear Amazon talk about how they're, they're developing more customized uh, uh, solutions. You see the OCP initiative that came out of Facebook with sort of horses for courses configurations. How do you see converged infrastructure fitting in to, to your whole space? So, of course, as you are aware, very well that VCE was uh, first attempt uh, across the Federation and in partnership with Cisco mm -hmm. to go after the compute networking and storage. And VCE has been received very well by our joint customers. We are also looking at few other options to leverage the technologies we have, such as the scale IO and the vSense of the world to ensure that we continue to be player in a converged market. But that is definitely you know, I call it, um, in layman's term, data center in a box. It is definitely a preferred option. Uh, you, you don't have to configure it as much, and you can scale out as much as you want. So we're definitely seeing demand for converged infrastructure. So I wonder if you could just give us, I mean, you're not going to give us hard metrics, but if you can give us just a sense as to how it's going in the vision. Uh, I mean, to, to do something like this in a large organization, it's not, not trivial. So you, you've successfully put the organization together. You've made a couple of acquisitions. How's the uptake been at customers? I know at, at EMC World, uh, there was a lot of enthusiasm, or certainly around what they were showing with Extreme IO, but maybe you can give us an update just in general terms. Market momentum, things that you're seeing, you know, enthusiasm that you have, and, and then, then we'll wrap. Yeah, so uh, Dave, good question. So what we have seen is customers are definitely excited about these two technologies that we have. So first is from an all flash array conversation, when the performance demands are very high, a lot of our customers are coming to us more like a pool model and asking us about an all flash array or an existing array, what performance, at what cost we can give it to them. So uh, definitely a lot of momentum on Extreme IO business already. Uh, we ga the product on November 14th, and so it has been on market for six weeks. Prior to that, for a few months, it was in directed availability. So what we have seen is now customers are able to install and are pretty happy with the performance they are seeing in the VDI use case or uh, virtualized servers and so on. With scale IO, we have seen again demands on both sides. One is service providers are definitely having conversations with us, some of the large names, and also on the enterprise side, when they are trying to leverage desk capacity, they are definitely exploring that. So we have a great momentum behind us. The company has been very supportive uh, to ensure that these technologies are successful, and so far, uh, I'm very positive about the future of these technologies. So my last question is, uh, what should we be paying attention to? What are your sort of you know, goals over the next six, nine months? Milestones that observers should be watching as sort of indicators of progress. So we are going to, of course, um, evolve the roadmap uh, when it comes to say something like Extreme IO and continue to add features. As I said, the architecture was designed from ground up to leverage 
flash power. So we'll continue to add features over time and do multiple releases. When it comes to scale I.O., we also have uh, another release pl planned in the Q2, Q3 timeframe. So there will be features we'll add there too. And then there are other technologies that are being worked on in our division, and hopefully we can announce that at EMC World. <laughs> All right, CJ, well, thanks very much for coming to our studios in Massachusetts. Appreciate you uh, making the trip up here, and thank you, Stu, for the good work you did, uh, you released this morning. and. Uh, and we'll keep it right there. We'll be tracking uh, this issue and the evolution of, of ServerSAN and EMC's uh, Emerging Products Division. Uh, this is theCUBE. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thank you.